Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we will start with our cross country program. Um, as I introduced uh, just a, a few minutes ago, or I guess a little while ago, we've got three of our cross country coaches up here, but Coach Warner and Coach Boyd decided they would let Coach Jett do all the speaking tonight. So I'm gonna turn it over to him at this time. So give it a nice round of applause for Coach Jett. They let me. I didn't think I had an option. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with thank yous. And first, I'd like to thank the Sports Boosters for this uh, wonderful meal. Let's give it up for the Sports Boosters. I'd like to thank Ketta and Tyler over at Mid-America Rehab. Uh, I thank Holly Hughes Camp. Thanks to Jason and to Harold. I need to thank Holson for the care package they sent to the state meet with us. Uh, a big thank you goes to Mr. John Boyd for his tireless efforts. He's with us uh, for every run, every workout, and he, he volunteers his time for this. Uh, he's a class act. I uh, need to thank Chris, Chris Warner for his time and dedication. Uh, the program wouldn't be without, where it is without his efforts. I need to thank the parents for their support. I need to thank my wife who understands and supports the time and the commitment that goes into coaching, and I need to thank her for the care package that she sent to the state meet as well. And we'll move on to the season. And I've got a, a bunch of things written here about the boys' season, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of wing it and just say that we've got a young squad with a great deal of potential. Um, started the season really not knowing what some of these youngsters were going to be capable of, but as the season progressed, they started to solidify as a team, and they started working harder and understanding what the expectations were. And by the time we got to the conference meet, um, they were ready to try to win a conference championship, and they did just that. Uh, we had three three runners run all conference standards at the at the conference race. Uh, next, we set our sights on the district meet, and um, if you follow cross country at all, you'll know that Class Three District One is arguably the toughest district in the state. It has been for at least 15 years. Um, most years, teams that get through from our district go on to stand on the platform at the state meet. So, and that's the girls' side and boys' side. You know, give you an example. Uh, Potosi won it last year. They're out of our district, and Festus was second. This year, if you watched it, Festus won the state meet, and Cape Notre Dame was second. They're both in our district. Last year, the girls won the state title. Festus was right behind us. This year, kind of reversed it. But so it gives you an idea that the, that our district is uh, is loaded with talent, and it it comes from great coaching. But um, anyway, we set our sights on the district race, and we knew, well, there are some great coaches in our district, no, no doubt about it. All right. That didn't sound right. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> so we set our sights on district, and we knew, and we knew we would have our hands full with both Potosi and Cape Notre Dame. Um, we got to the race, and it was down at Dexter, a pretty flat course, which doesn't necessarily play into our hands. Flat courses lend themselves to those runners that have a little more speed, and uh, we worked the hills because the state meets pretty hilly. But anyway, we went down there and uh, put our our best foot forward, and wound up a distant third. We got beat by three points by Kate Notre Dame, who would go on to be second at the state meet. So, you know, to talk about the boys team, had they made it through, in all likelihood, they would have brought a trophy back from the state meet. So, you know, while we're young, uh, we gained a lot of experience this year on the boys side. Uh, they're, uh, they're destined to do some big things. The girls side was a little different story. We might sum that up with one word, frustrating. Issue af after issue, uh, there's eight girls on the team, every one of them had an issue, and all the issues lasted the entire season. So keeping them patched up enough to run was uh, a pretty big challenge. 
keeping their uh, their spirits high was a big challenge. And uh, you know, we we raced as a team, a full team, only twice. Um, we did run run the conference meet, but we w didn't really have a full squad. Um, but a testament to their character, uh, they stayed together. I think they they grew closer as teammates, and uh, you know they spent a lot of time in the pool or on the elliptical or on bikes, and uh, it really was a season unlike anything that I've encountered in my 19 years as a head coach. Um, they ran well enough at the conference meet to win a, a district or a conference title. Uh, we moved on to Festus or to uh, the district meet, and um, we knew Festus was going to be a big challenge. Uh, they stepped up to it. We beat them by six points, and uh, off to the state meet. And uh, well, that was another story. Festus wound up tying with us for a, at the meet, and uh, it's, it's rare when you tie 72 to 72, and um, it goes to the sixth place runner, and, and they edged us out. So. For them to uh, perform the way they did at the state meet with all the, the setbacks and the issues that we've had, uh, really um, a testament to their abilities, their desire to, to succeed, and their character. So with that being said, let's move on to the, to the runners. And we're going to start. All right. All right, we'll start with the freshman boys. I'm just going to do this in order, alphabetically by grade. We'll start with Simon Grass. Freshman, and I'm going to have all these kids come up here and stand up here so they can be as uncomfortable as I am. <laughs> Simon's a young man with a great deal of potential, but in order to realize his potential, he's going to have to completely buy into the program. Freshman Logan Kurtz. No Logan. Freshman Max Upchurch. Maximus. When Max was in middle school, I nearly rang his neck every day. <laughs> but he grew up a lot this summer. Much of the season, Max was on the top seven. He'll be a key runner on a very good boys team next season. Freshman, oh yeah, he is on an all-face team. If you want to stop by Coach Warner's room, it's one of the best running faces you'll ever see. Top 10 in the state. <laughs> Let's see it again. <laughs> It can't be reproduced. Somebody go get that picture. <laughs> Freshman Clayton Vaith. Clayton was our number four runner most of the season. Like his freshman teammates, he too possesses a great deal of potential. Still, the demands and sacrifices of this program can be in intimidating, but if he buys in, he'll be a great one. Sophomore Dylan Burr. This hard working young man had some kind of ache or pain nearly every day. <laughs> Dylan, how you feeling today? My hip hurts. <laughs> Dylan, how you feeling? My leg hurts. <laughs> I got a blister. <laughs> <laughs> and that got to be our running joke. Anyway, he is a hard working young man. <coughs> He didn't miss a morning practice. He only missed one afternoon practice. He gives you everything he's got every day. And he, too, could be a key member of a very good boys team next year. But he's going to have to do some more summer running. Sophomore Thomas Engelman. <laughs> Thomas struggled most of the season with ankle issues. He'd improve, then he'd see setbacks due to his, his ankles. This would continue throughout the season. Good health and more commitment could help Thomas realize his potential. Sophomore Brevin Garner. <laughs> Brevin came out a, a little bit late, and he didn't do much summer running, if he did any. But he does possess a great deal of potential, which will only be realized with running. With a good summer and following my plan, Brevin could help his teammates bring back a state trophy next season. Sophomore Ben Nagger. After placing sixth at the state meet as a freshman and earning All-State honors in the 3,200-meter run last spring, Ben was hungry for more of that kind of success. He did the work this summer and followed the plan. Like many of the kids, he had a great experience at the Joe Bill Dixon Wilderness Running Camp. 
And uh, they go down there and they camp on the North Fork of the White River. Um, it's a mile uphill either way to get out. And uh, it's, it really is wilderness, but it's a great experience for him. Um, he came back from the camp more focused and a stronger runner. Ben wound up winning five races this season, including the conference meet, which earned him all conference honors. He also earned all, all district honors, and this past weekend he went for broke and led much of the state meet, getting past in the last 600 meters by a senior from Festus, Michael Carls. He wound up second and ran the third fastest time of the weekend, Ben Nagger. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a great one. Sophomore Nathaniel Ogden. He's the good looking one. Just ask him. Nathaniel and his brother are kind of a success story that proves that hard work and dedication can pay off. Nathaniel did the work this summer. He had a great camp. He entered the season in excellent shape, although he hadn't been doing the long runs quite yet. <laughs> oh, you know it's true. That's why your brother waxed you at the time trial. Uh -huh. Two words, long run. This season, Nathaniel earned all conference honors, he earned all district honors, and he placed 31st at the state meet. Quite an accomplishment for a sophomore. He's grown into a fine young man and a runner. I look forward to seeing what his future holds. Skyler. Also known as Shula. I saw that coming. <laughs> okay, he's comfortable with that. I never said that. It didn't start that way. I never said that. All right, it's hard to talk about one brother without talking about the other. <laughs> they are very competitive. Both are very goal-oriented goal and driven to succeed. Skyler, too, did the work this summer. He had a great camp and he entered the season ready to run down his goals after doing his long runs. <laughs> oh, by the way, oh, I put that in there. Yeah. Ad living a little. Skyler earned all conference honors. He earned all district honors. He earned all state honors this past weekend, placing 17th. Yes, all state. In the process, what else did you win? Shaving coach boy's hair. <laughs> <laughs> he also won a nice short haircut for our volunteer coach, Mr. John Boyd. <laughs> his bet with him at the beginning of the season and he says I think I'm safe he wasn't safe <laughs> it's great when you see those kind of things happen though we did have a senior boy on the team he can't be with us tonight Tristan Ponder he uh, you know his unique personality added quite a bit to the chemistry of the boys team I'll just say that on to the girls. Freshman, Summer Garcia. She started late. I don't think she did any summer running, so she tried to play catch up. And she started the season running shoes that were wrong for her feet, and soon she was suffering from a strained solace. She spent countless hours in the pool, on the stationary bike, or in the on the elliptical. When she did return to running, it would be short-lived, and she'd be back in the pool. And she wasn't very happy, but she did what we asked. And, and sometimes I think she did it for the team more than she did it for herself. And uh, she did get to race a few times. She earned all conference honors. She was our number five at the district meet, and she helped her team to a second place state finish. 
She's a tough young lady. You got a lot of admiration for her. Freshman Madison Rainey. <laughs> like the rest of the girls' team, Madison had setbacks as well. She went to a reputable running shoe store and got fitted for shoes that were supposed to be right for her feet. They were not right. And we didn't find that out until about probably seven or eight weeks into the season. So she too suffered from a strained solace. Uh, before the injury hampered her training, Madison saw a five minute improvement in her 5K time. Junior Amy Hook. We had uh, two girls with a, a similar issue. There's a compound in iron known as ferritin, and it's essential for, for distance runners. You see low ferritin issues with boys, but primarily it's, it happens with young ladies. And uh, after our first race, Amy was pretty pale. Actually, it was the second race, I think it was Forest Park. And I thought, there's something wrong. And she got tested, and sure enough, she had a low ferritin level. It's, it's tough to get that ferritin number back up when you're, uh, I'll move away, when you're in the rigors of the season because uh, the training is pretty intense. But she struggled through it. Amy earned all conference, all district, and all state honors. She placed 22nd. It might not have been her dream season, but it's the season that God had, had in mind for her. And now we focus on track. Junior Meyer German. Maya also suffered from low ferritin. Most girls that, that have these low ferritin issues are pretty much out for the season, but these two are pretty tough. Uh, Maya got to race most of the races. Her worst finish all season was third. And uh, that's, that's racing against class four kids as well. Maya earned all conference, all district, and all state honors. She placed second at the state meet. Quite a race, quite an accomplishment for a young lady with low ferritin. She may be, she's one of the best runners in the state, and her desire for cons continued success will help her fight through this ferritin issue. Junior Mallory Kohler. Well, Mallory's season started with uh, an overheating at the Lutheran South meet. I got pictures of it up here. <laughs> <coughs> and she had to have a trip to the ER, and things kind of went downhill from there. Um, she wound up with this torn fascia in her quadricep, which sidelined her for quite a while. Uh, she was able to bike some. After, uh, after talking to the right people, it was confirmed that she could actually start running again if she wore a compression sleeve. And uh, that was an experience because it's um, a neoprene compress compression sleeve, and so she would bring it in and wring it out, and look how gross this is. <laughs> anyway, her, face, her first race back was the district race. Uh, she placed 10th and earned all district honors. Uh, late the week of the state meet, she developed some sinus issues. I think that hampered her state performance, but she still finished with a solid 28th place. Junior Nicole Upchurch. <laughs> Junior had, a, or Nicole had a, a little different kind of issue. She had some uh, plantar warts on her feet that really hampered her training. Her desire today and her dedication, while she couldn't run, they got her in the pool or on the bike most days. Whenever uh, she did have a chance to run, she'd come back, and a lot of times her socks would be bloody from these holes in her feet. Uh, still, the pain didn't hamper her. She found the courage to race. She raced the conference, districts, and state, and she helped her team in all three races. Junior Taylor Werner. Like her teammate, she too suffered all season with something. It wasn't until the week before districts that we <coughs> finally diagnosed as, as bursitis, the hip joint, and uh, she got a 
cortisone shot. She ran relatively pain-free for the last two weeks of the season. Uh, she won the conference meet, she won the district meet, and she also won her third individual state championship. <laughs> Senior Maggie Fleeg, Magdalena. She's the dark ginger of the team. Well, we worked and worked to get Maggie to come out to run for us. She ran part of the season last year. She ran the last two miles of last year's state, state race with only one shoe. <laughs> and I was looking forward to seeing what a season with both shoes would produce. Foot and leg issues reared their ugly he head late in the summer and hampered her all season. Like many of her teammates, she cross-trained most of the season. She could only run when, she, when we thought it wouldn't worsen her leg or foot conditions. Maggie stuck with it, helped her team with her conference district and state titles. This season was not the season that any of these late young ladies dreamed of or worked so hard for, but sometimes this happens in athletics. Their character, their work ethic, their desire, their love of the team were all put to the test and they passed with flying colors. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2014 Boys and Girls Cross Country Team. I have one more key member. This would be our manager, Josie Beadle. Often unheralded, these managers make my job a lot easier. If uh, the runners would, it, well, they'd be the first ones to tell you on days that I have to write the times down, I'm a crabby man. So she does a great job for us, and I thank her very much for that. We do have some team awards. These were voted on by the teammates today. And the first one is the boys team leader. And this year's award winner is Mr. Ben Nagger. <laughs> now you guys will be getting your, your plaque or your medal or whatever at a later date, okay? But this, you know, when the season winds up like this, and you know, the state meet was Saturday, and I want to have everybody together to vote for this, and I really don't want to vote for it until we're finished, so everybody knows exactly where the contributions were. Um, that's why we didn't do pictures until today either. But anyway, the next award is the girls team leader, and this year's winner is Taylor Warner. <laughs> the next award would be the most improved boy. Very deserving. Skylog and <laughs> most improved swimmer award, <laughs> most improved girl, Summer Garcia. <laughs> most spirited runner, we've got a boy and a girl this year. Most spirited girl, Maya German. And the most spirited boy would be Max Upchurch. Congratulations, guys. That's a wrap. While our uh, cross country runners are, are sitting down, I just wanted to take a minute. Um, as you could tell with, with uh, the way Coach Jett was talking, and, and just if you've talked with any of the girls over the past week, uh, that they weren't um, extremely happy with the, the outcome of their season. But um, that just goes to show you the, the goals uh, that they have, and, and they have the highest goals that you could, you could possibly have. And um, when you really stop and, and think about what they were able to accomplish this year, boys and girls, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, how many times can you finish second in the state and be disappointed about that? So girls and, and coaches and, and boys too, please please know that uh, we as a, as a school and a community are extremely proud of how you guys finished this year. Second place, it, it's, that's fantastic guys. And, and I think the whole weekend we ended up with a first place and three second places. 
uh, at a state meet where you've got over 150 runners in just the boys and just the girls. And that's tremendous. And, and I know it, I was at the state meet this weekend and I saw the disappointment on the, the faces of the kids. But, um, and, and I understand that, your goals are high. But please understand that you guys are fantastic and, and, and the second place is, is still amazing. I don't care what anybody says. So congratulations to you guys. And you junior girls, I gotta be honest with you, I'm getting kind of tired of going through my mail and half of it's not for me, it's for you guys. So <laughs> it's from Arkansas and Indiana and all these big colleges and it's, it's great, but I'm, I'm like, look at all this mail I got. Mm, no, it's not for me, so. <laughs> Um, and really quick before we move on to the next sport, uh, I wanted to do this before and I, and I uh, it slipped my mind, but uh, our kitchen staff, I'd like to give a big round of applause to our kitchen staff for the meal tonight. <laughs> Always lots of compliments. They do a fantastic job preparing and serving the food and we thank them very much. I'd also like to thank Coach Jed to mention the, the sports boosters. Uh, we have four officers that work extremely hard throughout the year. Uh, Kelly Solkowski, Kim Palmer, Pam Meyer, and Kay Walmack. And uh, they do a lot of things behind the scenes and it's, com it's completely volunteer, whether it's preparing for these banquets, working concessions, uh, getting people together to work concessions because they can't do it by themselves, coming to the, to the meetings throughout the year. They spend a lot of time and it's all a volunteer. <coughs> And uh, just give it a smack. Uh, so I'd like to thank them at this time. Please give them a round of applause. Okay, we'll turn it over to softball. We'll start with uh, JV softball with Coach Weiler, and then after him, uh, Coach Kreitler will take over. Coach Weiler, you're up. Uh, I'd like to introduce the uh, team to start off with. If you would, please hold the applause to all of, all of them are introduced. Uh, start with the freshmen, Hannah Wilson, Hannah pitched for us, Caitlin Kreitler. Caitlin played shortstop, some second base. Lydia Ketting, Lydia pitched, played some shortstop and some second base. <coughs> Sally Greasehopper played third base. Tanisha Geck, she played uh, second base, third base, and some outfield. Caitlin App, um, we have injuries also. Caitlin got hurt for the first game and she was out six weeks. She came back, um, almost got to play the last game, but she did. She, she was out the entire season. Um, sophomores, Hannah Kreitler. Hannah caught for us, but then she also had an injury and uh, didn't work out too well when she, you have a hip flexor and you have to squat. <coughs> Jordan Hain, Jordan played some outfield and then did some catching. Katie Glassy, Katie played outfield for us. Claire Fisher played first base. And Caitlin Bloom who also played some outfield. Okay, my thoughts on the season. When we first started, we, we, um, I'd been out of coaching for a few years and uh, got back into it this year and, and uh, we played our first two games and, and, and I wasn't really worried about winning a game. I was more concerned about scoring a run. We, uh, first two games, we struggled. We, um, we were very inexperienced, and um, and it really showed, especially the first couple games. We had chances to score runs, and we didn't. We weren't very good at running the bases. But then, the more we uh, played, the better we got. We <laughs> the more we played, the better we got. We ended up winning five games on on the year, including uh, going three to one at the Farmington tournament. Three to one at the Farmington <laughs> tournament where we took third. <coughs> um, overall, it, it was a, a, a really good season for us. We, you know, we had a lot of fun. 
and I really enjoyed it in, in because of these girls, and, and they're all here tonight. I had a lot of fun working with them, and also I had a lot of fun working with the varsity girls. And I'm really looking forward to coming back next year and, and improving both the JV and varsity. Thanks, uh, Coach Weiler, and I just want to add on to the JV team. They were five and ten this year, and uh, it was really fun and, and really enjoyed working with them. And uh, I know they'll work hard during the off season to improve on everything for next year. Okay, um, I'd like to acknowledge some people first. Uh, to start off with, my wife Mary Kay, who has to watch uh, five kids full time while I'm here. Uh, coaching softball for two and a half months so um, I'd like to thank Mr. Nix here for everything he does for us coaches. I uh, kind of gave Mr. Nix a hard time uh, whenever uh, the uh, this banquet date came out because it did hit my oldest daughter Kyra's birthday today so I kind of gave him a hard time with that but uh, in his defense when you got as many kids as I do it's kind of hard not to <laughs> find a date for that so We'll work on that for next year, Mr. Nix. I might have to bring birth certificates and we'll figure things out. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank, again, uh, Coach Weiler coming back to softball. He's just got a, um, an, an, a plethora, I'll use that word, of knowledge for softball. He was the head coach uh, when I was, I was starting into it, um, probably six years ago. Um, we got him back into it, and uh, he's just, he's been amazing. I mean, I talk to him all the time uh, about softball and what we can do and things we can work on, and just got a, a lot of knowledge. Uh, Coach Kettinger, she's not here today. She works with the pitchers and the catchers. So she did an awesome job this year uh, helping us out. Uh, another person I want to thank, too, that helped the team out quite a bit, Eric Hook. I know he's here tonight. Uh, Eric kept score, the scorebook for us. Uh, you were there at every practice, Eric, almost uh, to help us out and give us more time for instruction time early on. Uh, even before the games, you, you helped out the outfield and hitting them the balls, and uh, we really appreciate it. That was all volunteered. You did it, and I really do appreciate it, Eric. Uh, yep. He's sitting right over there. <laughs> Uh, Jason Viox, I know he's here today. Um, he did a nice job covering our sport, and he's done a, a wonderful job just in the community. So, Jason, I appreciate everything you do. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Frank Kirschmer with PrepCast, Don Pritchard with K, uh, KBDZ, Sun Times, KTJJ, B104, The Daily Journal for covering our teams. Our own Ashley Viox for updating the softball webpage. Uh, I want to thank David Bova, Nikki Jenkins, and Gary Mueller for coaching over the summer to get the girls ready to play. Uh, Tom Layton. Um, Tom comes in every year and puts up the fence for us up at Leon's Field. And he had to do it twice this year because we had some issues up in the field. Uh, but uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a guy that really doesn't have any connections with softball other than his daughter graduated a couple of years ago and played softball and I contact him every year coming up and he's more than willing to, to come up and put the fence up and this year we were out playing some, I think we were playing a doubleheader out at Potosi and we needed the fence up for our conference tournament and uh, he get, the next day it was up so he, he just miraculously does a very good job and it's, it's just up and ready to go. Uh, Darren Jacobs and the, the crew up in the, the city that gets the fields ready for us to play on. I'd like to thank them. And then lastly, I want to thank all the parents that worked in the concession stand this year. We had conference tournament and some other uh, tournaments that we uh, hosted throughout the year. I know there was a lot of parents that helped out. I know Dave and Julie Bova and Cheryl Mort Martin, she, uh, they coordinated the of everybody getting uh, a chance to work with or in the concession stand, and I really appreciate that. Now about our season. Uh, going into the season, 
I realized that we could be a very, very competitive team and one of the best defenses that I've ever coached. Um, we started out the season with tough losses, however, uh, to very good teams, Park Hills, North County, and Farmington. Uh, then we went to the Cape Notre Dame tournament and played, played better, going two and two. Um, finished seventh place out of 16 teams. After that tournament, we kind of picked it up quite a bit, going four, four, winning four out of our next six games. And those included some big wins over Festus and Windsor. Festus we haven't beaten in a long time, and we got them. Uh, at both games, uh, we had some sixth, sixth inning magic going on. Uh, in that Festus game, we were 0-0 going in the bottom of the sixth inning, and we scored a seven spot on them. And then we were able to, to uh, get three very hard outs to close that game. And that was a big game for us. Uh, to follow that up, we played Windsor, who was unbeaten at the time, and they only lost twice the whole year. Uh, we were losing six to nothing going in the bottom of the sixth, and we scored nine. And we were able to close that game off nine to seven. We seem to have those big inning bursts throughout the season to help us win games. I'm going to try to get this right here because I wrote down a lot of stats here. Kind of wrote big. Seven times during the season, we scored five or more runs in an inning to help us win games. We were able to score late in games. We scored 38 runs in the sixth and seventh inning in 24 games that we played. Now that's taking good quality at bats and really doing a good job of bearing down in the late innings to close out a game. So I'm really proud on how the ladies, they, ne they never quit on any game, no matter how it was going. Uh, we hosted the conference tournament. Not many people thought uh, we would do very well. Uh, we were the fourth seed. The, the ladies put in a very good effort the first day. Uh, we beat Fredericktown the first game, and that matched us up with the number one seed, North County. And we came out strong and, and closed out. And we got into the, the conference championship game, and that was for the second time in three years we were able to do that. Uh, we came up short. Uh, against Farmington that game, but you know, we played hard, we played them hard, and uh, we fought all the way to the end. And that second place finish, that was a great accomplish accomplishment for this team and for our program. We finished the regular season win with a win over Hillsboro to raise our record to 13 and 10. Uh, for districts, we were seeded second, and that's the highest district seed we've ever gotten. Uh, but we came up short against the Sykeson team, and we ended up 13 and 11 for the year. And that's the second highest win total for St. Jen softball. So that, that was, you know, that was just amazing how uh, we were able to string some wins together. After reflecting, it, it really makes me smile and appreciate what our young ladies here uh, are able to, to do and learn for softball. In, in four short years, freshman, sophomore, junior, and a senior, you know, these ladies are, they learn to bunt, they learn to run the bases like Coach Gweiler had mentioned a while ago with the JV. They learn to play defense together. They learn game strategies um, to compete with hard teams around our conference and around our region that have a lot more experienced players that started out of the younger age uh, playing the game. So um, I really appreciate what, what we do here and what the ladies put in. And I really enjoy coaching. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished this year. I'd like to introduce the varsity team, starting with our only sophomore, Adria Mueller. <laughs> I approached Adria in the off season about being a slap hitter from the left side. She worked hard on her technique and really surprised me on how well she caught on. She had a really nice season. She batted 321, scored 17 times, had 10 stolen bases. Uh, she played left field for us. Uh, she pitched in three games and I think you pitched in 10 JV games too. So you, you had, sometimes you had some double duty to go through. So very good season, Adrian. Um, the juniors now. Uh, Allison Bova. Nope. Allison's not here tonight. Brooke Martin. 
Brooke played in 10 games this year, batting 11 times. Uh, Brooke did not get a hit this year, but was hit by a pitch once, um, walked twice, reached base on a fielder's choice, and she had uh, 273 on base percentage, and Brooke played some right field, and she made every play hit to her. Uh, Rochelle out. Rochelle played in seven games this year as a courtesy runner and scored five times and had a stolen base. Rochelle's primary position is third base, but we kind of talked her into learning to catch, and she took on to it and played some JV games for us to learn that position and has done a commendable job. Ashley Schmidt. <laughs> Ashley played in six games as an outfielder. Um, I think you played in almost every position, didn't you? In the outfield, Ashley, left field, right field, center field. Yeah. Uh, she was used as a courtesy runner, scored one time, and had two stolen bases. Amber Beckett. <laughs> Amber played center field for us this year. She made some amazing running catches and accurate throws this year. Uh, she only made three errors on, on the whole year. Uh, she had a 906 fielding percentage in 23 games. Offensively, Amber only batted six times this year because she was only used for her defense. Uh, and she had one hit and scored three times. Danielle Kemper. <laughs> Danielle played right field and second base. Had an 833 fielding percentage this year. Uh, offensively, Danielle batted 200 with four RBIs. Nine runs scored, four stolen bases. And she walks seven times. Uh, she, she, Danielle's a really hard worker, and I know she's going to continue to work hard to have a better senior season next year. Kelsey Karen. <laughs> Kelsey was our designated player this year, which means she hit for a player, mostly Amber. <laughs> Uh, Kelsey started off hot with hits in the first 10 games and was batting over 400 throughout half the season. She had big hits versus Farmington, the, their top pitcher over there, Nash. And uh, she also had hits against uh, DeSoto's D1 college prospect, Crowdinger. Uh, Kelsey had the big three-run three triple in the sixth inning versus Windsor to help win, a, win that game for us. She batted 314, 12 RBIs, and seven runs scored. Michaela Bader. <laughs> Michaela played second base and shortstop and had an 852 fielding percentage on the year. Offensively, Michaela had a great year. She batted 418 with nine RBIs. She was second on the team with 17 runs scored. Uh, she was first on the team with seven doubles, second on the team with uh, 465 on base percentage and a 556 slugging percentage and stolen bases of 12. She was voted second team all-conference and all-district for this year for her outstanding season. Megan Hook. <laughs> Megan was our pitcher this year, and going into the season, I didn't really plan on using her to pitch every game. But she did, and she did a fine job. In 24 games, she won 13. And to have an e she had an ERA of 3.25 as well, uh, she did increase her strikeout total from 54 from 30 last year. Uh, offensively, Megan batted 222 with nine RBIs. And I know Megan will be uh, another player I can count on to put in the hard work on the offseason to have a better year next year. Ashley Viox. <laughs> Ashley played shortstop and third base this year. And out of 93 total chances, she only made three errors. That's outstanding. Uh, offensively, she led the team in hits with 32, three triples, 23 RBIs, <coughs> two, or 11 two-out RBIs, 31 runs scored, two home runs, a batting average of 432, um, 14 stolen bases. <coughs> and she also pitched two innings as far as uh, against De DeSoto on senior night. Uh, she was voted first team all-conference and all-district. Now to our seniors. Olivia Schneier. <laughs> Olivia played in eight games this year, played some left field, did some courtesy running. Olivia walked and scored once. Uh, Olivia struck out just twice, so she did a good job of hitting the ball. 
uh, where the other teams can, the other team would field it. Um, so she, she did a really good job of putting the ball in play when she needed to. Brittany Klein. <laughs> Crystal Nagger. No, nope, 0 for 2. Kara Grass. No, nope, 0 for 3. How about this one? I think this one here is Weebs, you hear? Okay. Adrian Weebery. Weebs. Ours or mom would sign her out on the sign out sheet, Yachty. You didn't think I would see that, did you? With, with some other, I think all the parents caught on to that and started putting out cardinal names for the positions. I'd see some other things, Ozzie Smith, and got ridiculous. But anyways, uh, Weebs was her catcher this year. She showed continued progress in blocking and framing pitch balls as well as throwing runners out, trying to steal. Uh, she threw out 12 base runners this year. Offensively, she hit the ball well at the beginning of the year and was one of our hotter hitters. Uh, the workload of an everyday catcher, though, takes its toll on a player, uh, especially for a catcher. And uh, she ended up batting 250 with 15 RBIs. Uh, she had some big hits against Festus, Oran, Zaxony Lutheran, and Fredericktown uh, to score runs in those games to contribute in those wins. Uh, this year, she was recognized and named all district. Lauren Kuchta. <laughs> Lauren was our first baseman this year. Lauren had a nice year offensively. She improved in her batting average from last year to 314. Uh, tied for second on a team with 17 RBIs and 17 runs scored. Uh, Lauren really liked hitting against North County, Perryville, and Potosi. Uh, she racked up 15 hits and 11 RBIs against just those three teams. Uh, she was respectfully named all district this year, too. Reagan Zerwig. Reagan played third base in right field. Uh, Reagan batted 267 on the year with 17 RBIs, which was second, on, second highest on the team. She scored 13 times and led the team in being hit by a pitch seven times. Reagan had one home run on the year in the conference tournament versus Fredericktown to help us win that game. Um, Reagan also hit the game-winning double with two outs in our last regular season game against Hillsboro uh, to help us win that game. Uh, Reagan leaves St. John softball holding records in home runs in a season with seven in 2012 and tying for the most RBIs in a season with 27 in 2012. She was rightfully named all district this year. These seniors are hardworking ladies who played the game right the best they could in practices and in games. And I just hope that the younger players on the team have learned uh, from them and uh, for, to follow uh, in their leadership and commitment to our sport. And now I got some awards to hand out for this year. The first one is the most improved player. The winner of this award came in and worked hard during the off season to work on her new position. She did an amazing job this year and had a fielding percentage close to 800. When I look at her offensive stats from last year, she increased in her offensive production in a lot of areas, increasing her batting average, RBIs, runs scored, and stolen base totals. The most improved player this year goes to first baseman, Lauren Kuchta. The next award is the Dirtiest Uniform Award. She did a wonderful job the, the past two years at this position, and, and it was dirty blocking balls pitched to her in every game. This year's award goes to uh, Weebs. <laughs> the next award is the Hard Thrower Award. This is a new award. It goes to the player who displays accuracy and speed in throwing. The winner of this award tied the season season win record for wins this year for a pitcher and really threw hard at the end of the year. This award goes to Megan Hook. The next award is the Best Defensive Player Award. She made a lot of very good plays out in center field, a lot to score, uh, to save scoring runs. Uh, she made uh, every play looked very easy, um, cutting the balls off that were hit out in center field, throwing to the right bases, 
most of the time. Only had three heirs. This year's winner, Amber Beckett. The next award is strictly uh, based on offensive stats. It's the best offensive player award. This person led our team in many offensive categories, batting average, RBIs, runs scored, stolen bases. But the most impressive stats that I see that she had was the 11 RBIs with two outs. And out of 84 total at bats, she hit the ball hard 40 times and had an amazing 54 quality at bats on the year. This year's Offensive Player Award goes to Ashley Viox. <laughs> the last award is the MVP award. The winners, winners of this award were both all conference and all district, had very fine seasons to lead our team. One player starts our offense by batting lead off and gets us going offensively, and the other starts the defense by throwing the pitches. This year's MVPs are Ashley Viox and Megan Hook. And that's St. Jen softball. Outstanding season by our, our softball players. It was fun to watch you guys all season long, and uh, it was very exciting to watch you guys beat the number one seed, North County, at home to make it to the championship game. So congratulations on a fantastic season. <clears throat> we're going to turn it over to uh, volleyball now. I think we're going to start with Coach Huffman with the freshman, then go to Coach Kester with the JV, and then finish up with Coach Hess for the varsity. So uh, Coach Huffman, you're up. I'm going to start by calling my girls up first. So girls, when I call your name, go ahead and come up here and go see Coach Kester. Avery Reed. Kylie Sokowski. Drew Lalamandier. Cassie Eichhorn. Allie Grass. Brittany Clanton. Maddie Fallert and Abby Leonard. As you can see, um, we weren't super hard, uh, large in numbers. We actually started, I started coming in and I thought I had seven girls. So I was trying to figure out how we were gonna make rotations work and make this happen with seven girls. And then Coach Kester and I were discussing and realized that two of my girls would also be having some JV time. So that gave me five girls. And I don't know how much you guys know about volleyball, but you need six on the court at a time. Um, so these girls worked super hard to be flexible with me. Um, we actually got a nice surprise the first week of tryouts when we had a move in, and she ended up being a wonderful addition. Brittany came to us, and um, we, we, she was an unknown. We had all worked together all summer, and she jumped right in and improved and improved. She was even out with an injury. Um, she worked super hard from day one and got her up to speed, and then right before our very first game went down uh, with an ankle injury. So she was out for a while, so we went back to figuring life out with seven. Um, but we did finally all get to play together, and my girls had to work through so many different rotations because we had to work with um, Avery in one rotation and Drew in another, and they just, whatever I threw at them, these girls made it happen. And we were able to finish the season 11, 3, and 1, which I feel like is a testament to their flexibility. And they just kept working for me. Whatever I asked them to do, they made it happen. So you're freshman volleyball girls. Girls, I'm gonna go ahead and call you guys up one at a time and then you can go see Coach Huffman. First we have Courtney Dunsey, Madison Reynolds, Sam Bowman, Sam Bumgardner, Addie Stiegel, Morgan Doza, Darren Brown, Avery Reed, Andrew Lalamandier.
All right, I'll go ahead and start talking a little bit about these girls. Um, as you can see, we only had nine girls, which is the perfect number for me and which perf worked perfectly for us. We didn't have a lot of injuries, which is perfect, and uh, we had a lot of hard workers. Um, we ended up our record, you can go over there, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> our record ended up being 15, 3, and 2, and those three losses that we had went three sets, every single one of them. And only one of them was at a game I think we would all take back, and we definitely should have won. The other two were battles all the way down to the final point, which says a lot about these girls. Every single game we played, regardless if they were in their best game or not, they gave 110%. Um, we started off the season this summer, and our saying for the summer was, we're not going to settle for just being a good team. We want to push ourselves to be the great team. We want to be that team that other teams feared. We wanted to be the one that walked in the gym and dominated every night. And we did. We went into the gym and we played as that team almost every single night. Um, these are a great group of girls. I enjoy coming to the gym every single day. And um, interesting girls as well. <laughs> um, we have a few instances of girls running off the court throwing away gum in the middle of a play. Um, we have, we learned probably not to eat at zeros before the game because it doesn't really mix well when you're jumping and running and moving really quickly. <laughs> Especially not drinking soda, <coughs> Courtney. <laughs> um, other than that, these are, they always had me smiling and they always were working hard 110%. These girls have a lot of potential and I cannot wait to see them grow into that potential as the year goes through. Um, like I said, our goal was to become the that team, the team to beat, and we decided we didn't want to settle for being good enough. We took second place in the Cape Notre Dame tournament. We were literally that close to the championship win, losing 26 to 24. But we had to come back both games that we ended up winning, or in both sets. We ended up, the second set, we were losing 23 to 17. And I knew, I was like, we're not losing this. We're not done. And we came back and won 26 24. The second, our third set, we were down, very similar situation. It was, pr I think, 23 16. Um, we battled all the way back. We ended up losing, though, 26 24, which I know is very disheartening to them. But I, I'm proud of them. Dexter's a heck of a team. They have a heck of a program down there. And so the fact that we battled back every single time was something that says a lot about these girls. Um, my message for you girls is take that settling all the way to the limit. Don't settle for anything in life and in future for everything. Push to be the greatest because that's exactly what you all deserve. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to start out um, tonight by sending out a few thank yous. I would like to first start out by thanking all of the parents um, for all the dedication to our team with the endless trips here and there, the pep up treats, hanging the banner off the bridges, the pregame meals, constantly washing uniforms, and the list goes on and on. The team's success wouldn't have been possible without the backbone behind the players. I appreciate that. Next, I'd like to thank uh, the various media outlets, Jason Viax at the Herald, KFMO, Frank Kirchmer with PrepCast, KTJJ, The Daily Journal, um, all for publishing our articles and posting our scores. I would also like to thank my assistant coaches, Crystal and Kristen, for keeping me in check, um, recording the game stats. It, it's truly a blessing for all they do. Um, I would also like to thank our managers. They help out there tremendously as well. Uh, Sam Griminger, Bethany Beckett, Abby Stolzer, and Selena Kreitler. Um, also, the uh, my scorekeeper, Regina, and Kelly Solkowski, the line judges, Mike McDaniel, Kyle Swice, and Josh Banks. Uh, we have to have line, judge line judges travel with us now, so I really appreciate their time and effort in the evenings. Um, I also owe a huge thank you to the spirit crowd. The intensity that you all bring to our games is like any other. I received numerous compliments on your enthusiasm and team spirit. I, uh, I would leave games and there'd be fans from other schools say, comment on how well you guys do and, and cheer for our school. Um, I definitely appreciate your sport and I know our team appreciates you guys being there. And I know many of you athletes are the ones at our games day in and day out, so I appreciate it. Now to this season. Uh, this year we were 24 and eight. We had some highs and lows throughout the season, but the dedication and hard work of the team paid off. We started our season in February with, and the girls worked their tail off. 
um, we start conditioning and we move on to camps and that's get, that gets us prepared for August. So they work really, really, really hard for a long period of time to gear up for August. Some of our accomplishments this season include, included winning the Silver Division of the Cape Notre Dame Tournament, taking first place and going undefeated at the St. Clair Tournament, and being co-conference champions of the MAAA Conference. It has been six years since that has happened. So now I put together a, a list of my, not a top 10, but a top eight list of my most memorable moments of the season. So, at <laughs> Yeah, be ready, start laughing now. All right. So number eight was our time at Lake of the Ozarks and the endless pizza deliveries. And I kept thinking, there's no way they're gonna eat all that. They did every time. Um, number seven, having a uh, record scoring game of 36 to 34 versus North County. Too bad we ended up on the short side, but that was the fifth highest scoring game in the state. It was a well fought battle. Uh, number six, <laughs> At the Potosi game, in a huddle, Caitlin telling the team to hit the ball in someone's face. And if you know her, this is a very unlikely comment from her. It was, I, I just had to turn my head on that one and say, who said, did she really say that? She did. Um, number five, the parents hanging a banner off the bridge at 6 a.m. only to be called in by the cops because someone thought they were going to jump off the bridge. <laughs> And our bus driver probably was going mm, maybe 40 on the interstate <laughs> just so uh, we could take a good look at it. And the, I'm like, we're far away. And I'm like, are those cop lights? <laughs> it was. All right, number four was our plyo conditioning days are always memorable. And they've been memorable for years. And the lessons learned when trying to catch someone falling off the box. I learned, don't catch somebody. <laughs> My attempt was not very successful. Uh, number three, uh, winning our Pink Night game versus Farmington. And those of you that were there kn knew that our spirit crowd was really fantastic that night. And it was a very good game, and it was a ton of fun. Number two uh, was winning all three games and shutting out Valley. Um, that was, you know, especially in their gym, it was a great night. <laughs> Number one was winning the conference title at Park Hills versus Park Hills. So that was a good, that was obviously my number one moment. So now moving on to the players. Uh, these are in no particular order. First up is Tess Bowman. <laughs> Tess played outside for us this year. She had a transition previously playing middle. She did a wonderful job transitioning, transitioning to the new position and worked hard at improving her mechanics throughout the year. She recorded 129 kills this season. Next up, Natalie Engel. <laughs> Natalie was a front row setter for us, achieving 184 assists, 80 kills, and 15 total blocks. She is a true athlete playing three sports a year as well as extracurricular sports and leagues. Next up, Camry Gettinger. Camry is a setter for us. Uh, she's a dedicated athlete and works hard in and at, day in and day out. She's a setter for primarily for us in the front row, and she had 14 assists on the year. <laughs> Next up, Hannah Giesler. <laughs> Hannah had a rough go at it at the beginning of the season, suffering a concussion on the second day of practice. Then the next week having her wisdom teeth taken out. After being a little discouraged, she quickly healed and was able to take on her duties as, de as a defensive specialist. She did a great job in the back row, digging up the ball and keeping it alive. She recorded 134 digs and 156 service receptions. Next up, Madison Reynolds. After some injuries on the court, we moved up Madison to fill in defensively, then playing half the season only to get into a fight with a wall, breaking her hand. <laughs> she had a great run at it in the back row for the first half of the season, and I'm ready to see what the future holds for her. She had 69 digs and 89 service receptions. You knew I couldn't let that go. <laughs> All right, Courtney Dunsey. Courtney uh, also filled in for us when we had an injury, only to getting to play a few sets, but she recorded three kills out of four sets she had. So that's a 75% kill percentage, not too shabby. Um, she will be one I have high hopes for in the future. Kendall Sokowski. 
Kendall is a setter for us and one of the most positive players on the court. She's always boosting up her team. She recorded five kills for us uh, and one, I, I think five assists and one kill. I've watched her grow throughout the years and wish her the best in the future. Caitlin Solkowski. Caitlin is an outside hitter and also a very positive player. I guess minus the time she told the girls to hit the ball down someone's face. She did a great job on the floor for us and I, and I wish her the best in, route in, in her route to becoming a vet. I will miss her stories from the vet clinic. Um, Mo, oh Mariah Ritter, sorry. She stepped up this year filling in the libero position and really grew as the season went on. She got more comfortable with the position and everything fell into place defensively. She recorded 385 digs, 388 serve receptions, and she also served 265 times with only missing four times. Now that's pretty awesome. <laughs> She attained 16 aces and she earned second team all-conference. Next up, Jessica Probst. <laughs> Jess is a back row setter for us and is always one of the hardest workers in anything she does. From being on the court to in the weight room to all the clubs and organizations that she belongs to. She's a very busy individual that gives her all in anything she does. She recorded 282 assists for us. <clears throat> Next up, we have Katie Palmer. <laughs> Katie is a middle, and she really grew this season as, as we progressed. She recorded many kills for us at crucial times and games. She had 144 ki kills. With her wicked serve, recorded the team lead in service aces at 32. She also had a total of 53 bucks. And Whitney Burr, I don't believe is here. She is sick. Um, but she did a great job transitioning from an outside to a middle. Uh, I'll move on to Emma Bosler. <laughs> Emma, again, was our leading attacker this year, attaining 265 kills, hitting out of the outside position. She played all the way around for us and had 266 service recep receptions and 236 digs. I'm excited to see what her senior year has in store for her. She earned first team all conference, first team all district, and second team all region. And last but not least, I have Riley Meyer. <laughs> Riley was an all around setter for us, leading us in assists at 297. It's, um, it's, it, thank you though. <laughs> and, um, at two, leading at 297 uh, assists and also leading in blocks with 53 total blocks. She has a three-year varsity player and I'm excited to see her back next year. She earned first team all conference, second team all district, and second team all region. And my managers, um, these girls helped out all season, uh, keeping score at um, games and at practices. Uh, they were Sam Griminger, Bethany Beckett, Selena Kreitler, and Abby Stolzer. Um, these girls did a great job filming for me. Uh, a few times I would have to ask them, why do I have nine videos? And Bethany would be like, nine videos? I guess they got happy to press the record button, I don't know. But they did an awesome job and kept me entertained daily. All right, so now we're going to start with the medals, and these are... Um, based on our stats throughout the season. So first up, uh, for most digs, with 385, was Mariah Ritter. Uh, our best serving percentage, with 98.5%, is Mariah Ritter. Our most assists, Riley Meyer at 297. Uh, our best service reception percentage goes to Emma Balzer with 93.9%. Our most kills at 265 goes to Emma Balzer. Most stuff blocks goes to Riley Meyer with 27. 
Our most A serves goes to Katie Palmer with 32. <laughs> Next up, we have the awards that are voted on by the team. Our most valuable defensive player was Mariah Ritter. <laughs> Our most valuable offensive player was Katie Palmer. And our Shatteran Spirit Award goes to a duo, Kendall and Caitlin Sokowski. <laughs> and Coach Drum wasn't here. We didn't even have to, last year we had to sit between them on the bench, so when they got an argument, this year we didn't even have to do that, so not at all. <laughs> I missed something. All right. Oh, I even looked at him, sorry. <laughs> and our most, Kaylin got two awards. That was the real duo. <laughs> our most valuable player for the 2014 season was Emma Balsler. I looked at him. <laughs> it was a great season and a fun ride. And seniors, I wish you guys the best in the future in whatever you do. Please keep in touch, and I, it was definitely a good ride. Kendall, give me that uh, plaque when, before you leave tonight, and I'll make sure we get you a corrected one. I have two Caitlins on there, so. Um, where's Mo? Where'd Mo run off to? Mo, did you want to do that later, afterward, or do you want to do it now? Where is she? Where's Mo? Did you want to do that now or later? Later? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Okay, Coach S, that's probably the least intense I've ever seen you before. So I'm, just, I'm just saying. They kept me in check. <laughs> okay, there it is, right there. There's the intensity, all right. Uh, and, and Caitlin, I gotta agree with you. I don't know how many times I told our hitters at lunch or, wh or whatever, make sure you spike the ball off somebody's face tonight, make them cry, and then talk trash to them about crying about it. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw it. 24 and 8th grade, it was fun to watch, but I really wanted to see that happen. <laughs> One thing to work on for next year, guys. Um, all right, and that brings us to our, our newest program. This year we got to start uh, a new program. Um, we've always had the, uh, the girls at our high school have always had the ability to play golf in the spring with the boys, um, but um, now they have the opportunity to play in the fall uh, with girls. So uh, we started a new program this year and of course we hired a, a new coach and she's uh, overly qualified. She's a great coach and we're going to turn it over to her and she's going to give the first ever girls golf speech. So Coach Kime, come on up. Wow. Uh, first year program, we have a lot of thank yous to give. <laughs> Maybe it works. I'm not, I don't have the touch. I don't hit things, I'm a golfer. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, there we go. Um, I won't touch it anymore. Uh, first, a big thank you to the district for even us giving us an opportunity to represent St. Genevieve um, in girls golf in the state. Mr. Nix in the athletic department, um, he found us a very competitive schedule in our first year, and that's really hard in your first year. And in general, he was a big support. I asked him a lot of really dumb questions, and he didn't make me feel dumb about it. Um, Dale and the golf course, we use their facilities and he was a big help when we were planning home matches and just in general with different golf things. Uh, coach Kyle Schweiss, who's our boys coach, um, he really helped me at the beginning of the season getting practice started and getting the girls and getting to know the girls, so I thank him a lot. Uh, Jason Viox and the Herald, they did great coverage for us all season, lots of pictures and lots of articles, so that was good to see as well. And being a startup program, we had a lot of first year expenses. And I had a lot of different people who um, offered to sponsor different things. Kevin and Arlene DeRouche bought us uniforms and hats. Um, we had, 
We bought golf bags for both the boys and girls programs. Um, Jay's Laundry Service, Barley Automotive, Bloomsdale Excavating, and Tom and Susan Kime all donated money to purchase golf bags that will be used by both boys and girls programs this year. But I also want to thank all my parents. Golf is not a highly attended event. I know that's surprising. So not a lot of people show up, but my parents did. And so we'd go to tournaments where other people would not have people following them, but my girls did. And that's a biggest help when you're first starting a program. Um, but now to get into our season. It was our inaugural season for a girls golf program. And it was a great first season. Um, we had a lot of firsts, obvious firsts, like our first nine hole match, 18 hole match, first away match, first home match. But we had some other monumental firsts. I had two sophomores, Madison DeRouche and Even Gassier, who played in their first ever girls golf match. Um, they both played for the boys teams last year. I had a sophomore and a freshman, uh, Becca Fowler and Tess Biat, who played in their first career golf match ever. In our first 18 hole tournament, we beat teams from schools who had established girls golf programs for years. Uh, we had a sophomore in our first year, Madison DeRouche, who qualified for sectionals in our first season. We kept the goals very simple. We knew this year was going to involve a lot of learning, not only for me, but for the girls as well. So we focused on the basics of golf, the rules of golf, and setting and achieving personal and team goals. Um, we focused on basics first, fundamentals, course management, and the mental aspect of the game. One thing I can always count on my players for was a positive attitude. Uh, where other girls would fall apart from a bad shot, my girls were always smiling and focused on the task. Uh, Becca Fowler was great to watch in this regard. I'd watch her have like a terrible hole and you know as a golf coach you're like driving up like should I even talk to her? Like what do I do? So I'd be like hey how's it going? And she's like it's great coach. It's going fine. It's like she didn't even know I watched the last hole. <laughs> <laughs> My lone freshman Tess Biot, her favorite course was Crown Point in Farmington and she might hit a shot she didn't like but it didn't matter. You could tell her anything you wanted about that golf course. She loved it. So we focused on remaining positive throughout the season regardless of the situation. We also focused on being protectors of the game or knowing the rules of golf. I wanted the girls to feel confident no matter where they were on the golf course and what the rules entitled them to. And I also encouraged them to be honest and to keep their competitors honest because in golf there is no referee. You are the referee. Um, I'm sure they got annoyed with me asking them in the car on the way to every match how many options they had for a lateral and regular water hazard, which I hope they still remember. But I quickly found that it wasn't just that I wanted them to know the rules, they wanted to know too. Uh, Madison DeRouche would come to me all the time with rulings or rules that she encountered and I'd be like calling other golf coaches or checking USGA just to make sure I had it right, which just goes to show how seriously she took the rules and how much she was thinking about them even when she wasn't playing. And Eva Gassi and I encountered a ruling on a course which gave us a teaching opportunity not only for our competitors but their coaches about when the ball actually becomes in play on the golf course. And then last, we focused on achieving individual and team goals. At the beginning of the season, I asked each girl to write down what they hoped to learn this season. And this is what I used to guide practice. So we worked around the greens and chipping accuracy. We worked on accuracy when it comes to hitting fairways, whether that was their irons or their woods. And their scores reflect, reflected this directed practice. I had a player improve 13 strokes from her first nine hole match to her last nine hole match. And I had another player that shaved 22 strokes from her first 18 hole score to her score at the, score at the district tournament. And while our team goals were lofty, the team continued to work towards them. Each girl took responsibility for her own game and did what they could to improve their own personal best. And we chose to be our own scorers and worried less about our competitors. It was this focus that led to a lot of individual and team success. Our scores were comparable to other programs also in their first years, and these were teams out of St. Louis. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with this group of girls and I'm committed to their continued success and growth as golfers for the next season. As a coach, you want a team who can get it done in the classroom but also come out to the course and apply the same work ethic to their golf games. And this group of girls exemplified that. I could have not asked for a better inaugural golf team. Uh, next year, we're looking to build on the foundation we set this year but also to grow our team in numbers. We love golf and we plan to share the love. I expect great things from this team with these four girls at the helm, and now I want to bring them up, uh, my four varsity golfers, and recognize each one. In no particular order, but I am going to start with Madison DeRouche. <laughs> Madison has been playing golf from a young age, and her love for the game is deeply rooted and obvious to see. She's constantly working on new shots or perfecting her swing, as well as keeping her competitive edge by playing in as many golf tournaments as she possibly can. <laughs> Madison won two golf matches this season, the first golf match of the season and the last golf match of the season. She placed 16th in the Lindbergh Invitational in St. Louis in a field of over 100 golfers and tied for 12th place in the district tournament, which granted her a spot at the sectional tournament where she placed 22nd. For her first season playing girls golf, Madison played exceptionally well. 
Madison's hard work and dedication will bring her much continued success, and I look forward to watching and helping her grow her game. Eva Gassier. <laughs> Eva is also welcome pickup. Oh my. Eva. I don't know if it likes me. <laughs> I didn't mean to touch it. <laughs> Eva, there we go. <laughs> Eva's also a welcome pickup from the boys team. She made several great strides in her golf game this season from the first golf ball she hit to her last at districts. Eva's scores do not do her game or her improvements justice. Um, Eva battled some illness towards the end of the season and despite the amount of pain or discomfort, she finished matches the best she could for her team. It's her dedication to the team that was evident not only at matches but in practice. Eva's scores were steady and consistent and her attitude was always positive. She pushed herself and that worked to her benefit throughout the season. It was a pleasure to work with Eva and I look forward to her bright smile and team spirited attitude for next year. Becca Fallert. Woo! Becca came to me after years of playing volleyball. Uh, Becca's natural ability combined with her athleticism made her a valuable asset to the team. Becca would leave her golf bag at the course but take a club home so she could practice swinging in her backyard. <laughs> she became a student of the game and began watching and reading anything she could get her hands on about the game of golf. I watched her fall in love with golf. Um, she could diagnose what she was doing incorrectly in her golf swing before I could even tell her. Her physical abilities aside, Becca also has a positive attitude no matter what she got herself into on the golf course. This probably helped her game more than anything else. It was a joy to coach Becca this season. I can't wait to see what her future holds. And then my lone freshman, Tess Viat. <laughs> Tess came to St. Jen from St. Agnes. Uh, she made exceptional gains in regards to her golf game this season. Tess started off the season hating her driver to ending the season driving the ball in the fairway past most of her competitors. She's a quick study. She would make swing changes based off watching other players swing a couple of times. Her attention to detail not only in her golf swing but with the rules of the game of golf benefited her greatly on the golf course. Watching her play and grow to like the game this season has been fun as a coach. During matches, I would stop and ask Tess how she was playing, and she would always reply with some witty one-liner and then just smile. She, she doesn't give up, she doesn't get down on herself, she just pushes on. Um, all these qualities brought her success this season and will continue to bring her <laughs> success into the next season. And I have two more awards while I have you ladies up here. I want to award the Most Improved Player and the Most Valuable Player Award. And I'll start with the Most Improved. The Most Improved Player Award recipient has honestly surprised me. She was a beginner. Her first time holding a golf club was at the first practice she came to. Her golf swing, however, was so natural that she didn't have to make many adjustments to improve, but the swing changes she was going to have to make were huge. They were going to take time. Instead of just working on these changes at practice, she chose to spend her days off, her weekends, and her hours after practice working out the kinks in her golf swing. But she didn't stop there. She began to read about golf, watch golf, play golf. All this combined probably explains why she improved her nine hole score by 13 strokes from the first match to the last. I'd like to say I was surprised by this improvement, but I'm not, she earned it. She worked hard for it, and I know she will continue to do so in the off season, because that same girl that picked up her first golf club ever the first day of practice, spent all her birthday money to buy a net so she could practice indoors this winter. It is my pleasure to present the inaugural Most Improved Player Award to Becca Fowler. The Most Valuable Player Award recipient is also every bit deserving and every bit as dedicated as Becca. This is a golfer who has loved the game from a young age and whose love has only grown. Along with her love for her game, her, score, or her skills and scores have developed as well. This golfer only allows herself two weeks off after golf season before she begins working on her game again, and she usually doesn't make it that long. She plays summer tournaments on competitive circuits and is quite successful. All of her work translates into a successful first golf season. This golfer won her first ever girls golf match with a score of 38, and she won the last home match of the season with the same score. Needless to say, she's consistent. I've mentioned it once, but she placed 16th in our first 18-hole tournament in a field of over 100 golfers. She tied for 12th of the district tournament in a field of strong golfers from the St. Louis area. Despite just missing the cut for the state at sectionals, she had a very successful first girls golf season. Her 9-hole scoring average for matches was 40.33 and her 18-hole tournament score average was 89, both of which are incredibly impressive for a sophomore girl golfer. It is my pleasure to present the inaugural Most Valuable Player Award to Madison DeRouche. Thank you for your continued uh, support. Look for us next year. We have big plans.
I'm going to come hug you. Will you let me hug you this time? All right, good stuff. Uh, before we, we wrap things up, microphone. <laughs> before we wrap things up tonight, uh, I want to make sure that all of our award winners for tonight, uh, for each of the four sports, also, if you were in all conference, all district, all region, all state, if you earned any of those awards or got a team award tonight, please stick around. Mr. Viox from the Herald is going to take your picture and try to get it all done in one night when you're looking nice and sharp in your nice clothes. So stick around, award winners in all district, all conference, all state, all region. Uh, Got to give away 50-50 and some banners, so don't take off just yet. 50-50 tonight for $50. Eh, how you like that? Bring your ticket up here with you so we know you're not a liar. Six seven five one three zero. Six seven five one three zero. Bring it on up for fifty bucks. Look at that. Dun, 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 dun. At the Walk of Fame there, all right. All right, 50 bucks there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, banners. We're going to give away some banners here. The volleyball banner, which you can grab and take with you tonight. Only take it if you win. Don't be a sore loser. Caitlin Sokowski. <laughs> Softball. You can also grab and take with you tonight. Eric Hook. <laughs> Cross country, those banners are going to be made soon, so uh, I will keep your information. Actually, if you win, make sure you give me phone number so I can give you a call when it gets in, okay? We're going to give away a boys and a girls, so I may have to draw multiple times here. For the boys, Joe Nagger. <laughs> and so, Jill, make sure you give me your phone number before you leave so we can call you when it comes in. And for the girls, Maya German. <laughs> One last thing before you go, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't do the math here, but um, it looks like out of 86-ish athletes, um, we had about eight or nine that weren't here this evening. When I first walked in the room, I thought, man, it kind of looks thin tonight, but I was wrong. Uh, you guys showed up in force, you showed up as athletes and as parents, and that just shows you uh, why we have such a successful fall season year after year after year. It's because of the dedication of you guys sitting out in those chairs. So thank you very much. Have a great evening, and we'll see you later.